Hey guys, today we're going to make a fuel line using AN fittings and a 6AN uh, braided nylon hose. Alright, so starting this line, I've got about 6 feet of uh, braided hose here. Now I've already mounted one end here using a 90 degree fitting and we're going to do a straight fitting on the other side. Now I've measured out this hose to 24 inches. That's going to give us enough room for engine movement. Now we're using electric tape here to keep the, the hose from fraying when we cut it. Now when you cut this line, you want it to be as straight as possible. So normally guys will use an angle grinder or a Dremel to cut on the side. Now this is just braided nylon, so I can actually get by with these side cutters. Uh, but we want to be very, very careful to make sure we have a straight line. We happen to have enough extra line here that it's not a big deal. All right, and we're just taking the scissors here and we're gonna make one clean, clean, clean cut across. All right, and here I'm just inspecting the line to make sure the cut is straight and even, and that's gonna let it seat against the back of the fitting. When you buy these fittings, you're gonna see that the diameter of the fitting actually changes slightly inside, so that it's slightly wider where the hose goes. So it's very easy to tell when the hose has been pushed up all the way into the fitting. Now you might notice the angle, <clears throat> angled aluminum that I have sitting inside the vent vise in the background here. Um, that is to help keep the, the fitting from getting scratched up and banged up during the, the fitting or the install. Um, normally you would just use um, aluminum jaws that you could purchase ahead of time. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to order those, so I made do with these, which is a slightly more expensive way. And this is just showing some markers that happened from using a regular wrench uh, when I did the other side. And again, if you if you purchase a aluminum and wrench ahead of time, uh, that'll prevent that kind of damage. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Now these fittings are two pieces. There's a cap that slides over the end of the hose where we've cut and another insert that tightens in, and the, the compression of that shank uh, pushing inside the hose expands it and compresses it against the walls of the cap. All right, so you start by sliding the cap onto the existing hose, and in a second here, I'm actually going to put that into the vise, uh, but first you're going to see me drop it. There we go. All right, and now I've, I've had a camera guy pick it back up, and I'm... Attempting to push it in by hand, but it's really going to be easier just to put it in the vise. Alright, and so now I've mounted the cap inside the vise and, and had a much easier time of getting the hose uh, properly seated. So it's ready to install. And I've cut some more angle brackets here uh, to put around my crescent wrench to try to, again to avoid scratching the AN fittings. But that ended up being mostly a waste of time. I really, really recommend just ordering the right wrench and the right vice grips ahead of time. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to put the second fitting inside of the first, being very, very careful to be straight. And I'm going to go ahead and start it by hand. Uh, being very, very careful to keep it straight. Uh, the last thing you want to do is cross-thread these two fittings together. Uh, when that happens, you can end up breaking the AN fitting, and then you, you have to replace it. And these are about 5 or $6 a piece, so that can get expensive pretty fast. Alright, again, we're being very careful to keep it straight, but once it go, goes on there, yeah, it's pretty easy to get it, get it tightened, and you really just tighten it until it's tight. Again, what's keeping the hose onto the clamp, or onto the, the hose end, is going to be the compression that's created by expanding the hose uh, as the shank pushes its way in by threading. And this is going to create a much stronger... Uh, connection fitting than a stock fuel fuel hose can. <clears throat> Again, here I'm messing around trying to get those aluminum ends onto the crescent wrench, which is mostly a waste of time. Um, it will, in this case, prevent it from scratching them. 
Uh, however, over time in the project, they ended up getting scratched anyway. So uh, it, this is effective, but you know it's not going to work once the line is actually inside the engine bay where there's no real clearance to be moving things around. Actually, I had a lot of problems using this wrench in general with its size. Um, once it's once it's up against the firewall, uh, you really don't have much room to move around, and so it took uh, quite a bit of doing just to try to get everything uh, buttoned down tight so that the fuel wouldn't leak once it's all installed. Uh, again, a smaller A and wrench is going to take care of that problem for you. All right, and it's it's beginning to be snugged. I'm just going very slow, very careful here. Again, I don't want to break the fitting and be out, you know, five or six dollars in a couple days to have a new one shipped to me. Um, and again, I got these fittings on Amazon, but you can also get them through Summit. Uh, Jags carries them. Quite a few of the local performance shops or uh, online performance shops will carry them as well. I think you can buy some of them at Napa. Uh, but since I already have an Amazon Prime account, I order a lot of my parts through there. All right, and so now the fitting is tight enough, and I'm just inspecting it here, uh, taking a look. And you can see some of the scratches that showed up. Uh, that side's not too bad, but the other side where I used uh, just the crescent wrench with a shop towel around it to try to keep it from scratching up too much was really not useful at all. All right, guys, and that's that's really it. Uh, it doesn't take much more than that as long as you use the right tools from the beginning. Um, enjoy. I hope you learned something. Uh, have fun.